So for people who are watching this video later, um, I usually pause at the very beginning um, to uh, allow people who are watching it live to uh, get the notification that it's happening and click on over to start watching. So there's usually some dead space at the beginning, but don't go anywhere. It gets going in a minute or two. Like we have one viewer. Okay. Looks like we have two people already. <laughs> two live and two remote. So, okay. So uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Hello. My name is Steve Carl. Um, we're uh, restarting our Sunday series. It's probably only going to be this one. <laughs> um, you probably remember if you're watching, if, if you've seen any of these before, that your uh, that when the pandemic uh, stay at home orders started happening in March of last year, that uh, um, I started doing these poetry live streams on Sunday afternoons to pass the time and hopefully help other people pass the time. And we went for about six months or so, and then um, I ran out of poems, so, or at any rate, poems that I wasn't embarrassed to read for other people. So, um, so I did what poets do, and uh, I made some more poems, and so now I've I've got enough to uh, to have another event. So that's that's what we're doing here today, and so I'm going to read from a new work that I was writing. Actually, I was writing this during a lot of the. Um, the readings that we were doing. Uh, I wrote this last summer between June and September. Um, and then it sat around for a few months. And then uh, I finally got working on editing it into um, something that I'm comfortable sharing now. So I'll talk a little bit uh, afterwards about the process of writing and editing it. But um, for now, I want to go ahead and get, get started and reading it. So it's called, with great obviousness, Pandemic summer. <laughs> so here we go. The lovebird rhetorically grooms her cage in the humid air of twilight. The former world will not return, nor would we welcome it. Initiative Tinder Tender sensation initiates negotiable apology, negates our ostrich policy. Terror primed, the austerity police execute a no knock on the clock, shoot through the blinds, kill the streams in their beds. Ramp trudge trends, bumbling trundle tramp, rump residency. Racist rope trope galvanizes the garage to flag fly driver d decency. The neo-confederate regime has fallen, statue status strewn and stricken. Scarcity in scare city lacks laxity, leading to timered tightness, raring to go, ghoulish. Schismatic schematic separates parody from parenting, renting from quarantine, teenager from imprinting in person. Parental leaves are falling. Exfoliant follies follow many excellent examples of saturated depilatory futility to the indignation of the goal abhorring appreciator of tactics. Levitators and gravy, a makeshift south of hemispheric apportionment, disappoints rapid fire scapegoat unpopularity pageant, 
futuristic race baiting metaphors abound casually a villainous trope to grope for hoping against dopery grocery contest replaces slash fails to replace food scarcity the poked monstrosities less abstract flaming cartel of banter deplatformed deer exist well before you posit their existence they carry the will of opportunity into groves and forests bowl cut unanimity appends music to humanist commuted crossed out corrupted stone sentence justice as justified justice as self-fulfilling cynicism dog paw back massage coincides with kitty's visit set to brew play our felonious overlords fail miserably to undermine the disease tide. Odysseus derision, a wounded man dooms them. Already felt, heating up with virus, contemplate the angles well contended. Sir, the fast food empire is extensive a cohort of flies, a naughty nightly Maserati, delve deeply into caterpillar financing. Post-inaugural menopause awaits a reckoning. Coronary snowplow opens a driveway of torture and fortune. Co-wrong me if I'm wrecked, but I believe Venus is 50% off. Sidney Bechet's kidney. Observed certainty fanatic, a paraprocedural affectation, unblending ambiguous anomalies with cursory dismissal. Riddle me this, O Morpheus of Memphis. Will ridding me of that rattle my ratio of riots to reciprocity? Consider that insidious distilleries, pillory, villainous fulfillment, approximated division invigorates collusionary misprision. Voluminous amusements for your consuming, an argument too numinous to ruin. Conclusion, ruination, or attunement, atonement integument this monstrous cheese gorgonzilla altered cuomo appearance portends amiable happenstance bologna opening reflects passive commandment to drape comedy lecture over rapid melting balloon the collective replenishment of authority. Less apocalyptic, please. Bizarre upendment of norms. Correct application of goop to the skin of civil society. Spa day for democracy. The pan flute says it all. Concentric regret rings around the posy a rocket full of pockmark makers. A grab bag of lucid atrocities lighting up the screens, lurid as junk mail and uncoiling contagion. Separate monologue riffs, deluge, delusional, Invite arrives into emptied mind. House cat. Up
equilibrium drifts. The intelligent calibration of the possible opening wherewithal to savvy breakthrough tech marvel wrestling heel Senate majority Impala with the snafu, a delectable paradise of homicide and homelessness, appreciative locust cookie bake off, festo encumbrance. Alien racetrack accomplice breaks Botany's bank locker. The frenemy arising with styled capture markings to vault to an imponderable. Valid, impractical Maserati of Tolkien, lit profs are stalking thee. Pasture. The galloping calumny of fudge erases montages of the blues. Zeppelin Zapata, impossible bourgeoisie. Purple Centennial apologizes for torrid window scorch. When unasked and voluntary to the welfare manager class's noteworthy acquired privileges. Its famous flames recreate Open up the calisthenics clinic, honey. I'll be home for Arbor Day. A sensational deadlocked armoire of falsehoods tumbles into the Allegheny, braving solaceless. Uh, the old days are beckoning from their purchase in the birdcage of history. Open up. I'm celebrating catastrophe in the foyer. You've unveiled a salutary monstrosity, bedbug. Replacement lifestyle, Vaughn Williams is its way to a dead end in suburbia. Blurry cognizance of a phantom organ, organizing away somewhere in the body. Put on the dad genes of Foregoing attunement patrols, suitably ensorcelled bureaucrats, namesake hurricanes, nested decorrection based in recursive monstrosity, a palatial nasturtium of calendar vulturey. This is thirsty work. An echo locates parodic implosion of fandom narration. Killjoy Partridge maintaining guilty man tendencies over eminent doughboy surprise. Qualified settlement encounters blatant motion of wariness amid suspicious charisma. Falsehood reciprocity attends to doom spiral. Protest valve reopens. The recoil spurs an ablation bordering on mania. 
impetuous role play fandom traduces correlative backsplash play halts for public execution Capacious intolerance for zebras masks fawning regurgitation complex, faking symbol appreciation over snack recollection. Basic moral framework would suffice, but no, they can't even. The coup of dawn synthed and looped embellishes our disaster, raking the framework. Uniform rows Free the hostage, ride the riot. Salutary efficiency of swelter proclamations pelt diminutive roster moves with fragment repair. Gelatin rosary beads dissolve under solar questioning, taking eternal return off table for a cycle. cranial mobster, celibate invention collective swims in haphazard insurance pool. The marksman's vase remains uncracked. All available evidence vindicates divinity in dense incandescence, since redundant sensations reflect conundrum's dance. Faith is full of failing, unformed for Land is rife with firearms and fire, and a fatalism forged of brokered fantasy. In claims through U.S. and A. Prime mover of vomit, collapsed into trigger, which figuring out what is vaguer. Celebration of the next dawn and the next. Lovebirds cheeps, the feline wow, and wagging from the dogtail contingent. Family gathers itself at the game table to play together. One more day, each more precious than the previous, that the last mark time hasn't yet arrived. Sorry, got a little choked up there. McTrump's Navy, a self-terminating fandom fantasy mode, mobbing the public discourse. Pan Chaosmos, the new would be normal, everything in crisis always, and gunners thinking to shoot their way out of the chaos, accelerated by gunners running around shooting. Misanthropic, microscopic conscience, drowned in resentment and grievance, exercising our Adamic prerogative to label and categorize every fucking thing that pops into our field of attention as gas masks elusive exit strategy, back to front mellowness means less react in the panic. Deviant progress derails the national trajectory, leaving progress rear viewed. Boutonier booster, prodding pandemic appreciation, follows a sylvan opportunist packing petals Officious fallout co collaborates with fire season to wipe clean every unraked floor. 
malicious bishop favors missile ballistically, but the negation is garish. Irate pirate conspiracy conserves severe racial empire. Machete precision held up as example for simple reconstituted paradox. Delivered, interrupted, or deliberated internally. Collapse isn't final. April in Parasite, sudden time grant of hiding from the virus, edgy invitation to fuck conveyed, a pleasurable slaking awaits undercover, momentary mentor, a saucer full of Chaucer. Fancy fan cam catastrophe, cardboard stand up blaze, I embellish connection to satisfy a longing acrimony momentarily at a pace where failure rages. My nascent blame game stretched, rant rave balance calibrated, then comes philosophy time. The late night focus shifts to focus less, ness, Persuasion countered with acquiescence. Dang, impressive. 1201 onboarding commences with, cause boundaries are set to be crossed. All this time with a single announcement of ridicule to entangle marathon of slumber. Aftershave advertisement masks headlong willy-nilly to war posture, war footing, and war orthopedics. Yet terminal Dunning-Kruger, wildfire, and pandemic don't seem to make a dent in their ourness. Messy stations of the cross await November's evangelical voter. Time and tide are impatient AF. Get it together, man. Capture a phonetic impression of dreaming, each syllable a mapped moment of emotional terrain stamped on the fly for the next traveler to take note of. I know what you're thinking, but not in the biblical sense. Pacific rictus apportionment bobbles Masonic clockwork the fortitude to imagine a crater replacing your city. Percolating dilemma mostly apparent as disease. Fellow rapidity expects ballroom ballistics report. Vellum sheet blues. Corpuscle fanatic. Engineered yelling the basic approval of indecency fervor. A solid paternity waiver envelops the rake, your basic fellowship maneuver on roller skates. My whistling past, a grave error by any yardstick. There's an apparent restitution for reverse saline trajectories. Arugula! Heat shield, catatonic, palindrome. Organic town crier syndrome pumps fully loaded nutritional integrity over celebratory moment. Aleatory no way of know-how, farcical equivalent of reverse genesis, then tea time. Recalcitrance, upended, paranoia, infallibility. Awakened walking, apartment filter nomenclature. Possibility of remonstrated protest. Vacation anomalies beckon from our RVs. Revitalized slang empowers nondescript clarification symmetries. The glancing blow, 
parcels off contagion in a sallow cooperative engine alert to the formal eruption of unbusied finitude awoken and ambulatory celebrate today's lesson in dystopia immersion learning what not to put in your sim world wait our actual world caprice wagon wagon rolls slides or doesn't orifice of bacon masked Moreover, Minneapolis meltdown, moping, misshapen malice maneuver. Meh. Hold your coalition attentively and beckon outward to who is reaching. Turbo libido. Emma. Fashion fade. The glitched out kitchen. Stem to stern apocalypse reveals archaic bonanza gregarious emotive lollygag and motoric mob rule comedians broken seawall is pardoned in single lame alchemy of heinous restive millhouse midwifery blap and blather blare faithfully spaced fit beauty diffuses the hallowed determinants of time suck book face tube you Turtwit. Sensory deprivation is own goaling logical fallacy conjunction. Apartment sausage caramba. Selfless endeavor prostitute. From my courtyards. Sir, the golem has resigned. The not inbreakable tiles on the bathroom floor ignore disaster's loom, sunk down but periscoping. Yay. Thank you. <laughs> so um, I wanted to talk a little bit about how um, how this came about, the, the process and whatnot. Um, and then if people have questions, uh, if you want to write them in the comments or um, something. Um, so this one, like the last piece I wrote, which was called Breath Nexus, and which I read um, last spring uh, in this reading series, and you can find it on YouTube if you, if you are interested uh, and haven't seen it yet. Um, so it grew out of the reconnection with my creative sources that happened because of this uh, reading series. Um, hoping for people who might want to be uh, might want to tune in and check it out, kill some time, and maybe entertain some people. Um, so, but uh, because I was able to, uh, you know, I was going through all of my poems every week and reading them out loud and just, you know, uh, reading them, reading through them to prepare for the, the readings that I sort of got, you know, the, the creative juices started going again and I started writing more. Um, but whereas uh, with Breath Nexus, um, I was working with sort of one pole of my poetic practice, which is taking um, found text uh, text that I didn't write and manipulating it, um, running it through text um, translators and translation engines and um, doing imaginary translations of 
things and using anagram generators and uh, you know filling my environment with um, uh, people doing giving speeches about the pandemic and whatnot and just pulling random words and phrases out of that to create a, a, a poetic narrative. Um, uh, after that process sort of ran its course, I wanted to um, kind of turn to the other pole of my poetic practice, which is just free writing. So, um, so starting in early June, uh, I started whenever circumstances would allow um, that when I would first wake up in the morning, the first thing I would do would be to just sit and write for several minutes until, you know, as long as I could. Um, or if I was woken up and if I woke up in the middle of the night and couldn't get back to sleep easily, sometimes I would also just kind of write in the dark and try to decipher in the morning, which wasn't always successful. But, um, but I wanted to kind of integrate as much of the way my mind moves um, in, in the dream state as I could, um, although knowing that in the morning the waking mind is, you know, starting to come into the ascendant. Um, but I was hoping that there would still be enough traces of the, uh, the, the dreaming mind in there to, um, you know, that, to appear in the writing. Because uh, I've always kind of associated the dreaming mind with the, the creative mind and uh, the way I think about creativity. So, um, so I just worked like that for a few months, um, just uh, poetic improvisations before I was fully awake, three to four days a week. Um, just writing down whatever popped into my head. And um, after I had already started that, I received uh, this uh, wonderful anthology of critical writing from the poetics program at New College of California um, that a friend of mine, Marina Lazara, and um, a couple of other people uh, uh, were the editors and uh, curators. And uh, I contributed an essay to that. Um, and after I got a copy of it, I was reading through bits of it, and uh, I was very inspired by something that Robert Duncan, who was the central figure of the poetics program in its early years, had said in one of his lectures. Um, he said, I work with the word that comes up for me, not what you think you have to say, not what you thought you felt. You go with the word that comes first. If it comes to you, it's your business to deal with it. And so I really leaned into that and you just would would write whatever, like I said, whatever popped into my head um, and just figure, you know. Um, manuscript. And then I just uh, started through the editing process, which initially meant just setting it aside for a couple of months while I tried to figure out what I wanted to do with it <laughs> and, and being okay with, with, you know, setting it aside and not, not knowing what to do with it yet. Um, so I wasn't sure whether, whether it was going to be one long narrative poem or whether it was going to be, you know, a sort of um, a pool of material, raw material that I could pull stuff out of to create, um, you know, unique poems or uh, separate poems on different subjects or whether it was going to be some combination of those things. And eventually I kind of settled on the idea of it being one, um, one whole piece, um, but of separate, made up of sort of semi-independent units. It's almost like a, um, almost like an imaginary diary um, with, you know, you know, daily or, you know, periodic entries. Um, so then after having kind of decided that that was the direction I was going to move it in, um, you know, I went through each piece individually and kind of tried to figure out where it fit into the whole. I didn't do too much moving around of stuff, but I did some. Um, there was some stuff that seemed to work better in, you know, not in the chronological order that I had written it in, but it's by and large, it's, it's, it, um, it's in the chronology that I wrote it in, but also poetry, a, a poetic narrative does create its own chronology. So, um, 
So there is that. It has its own internal chronology, regardless of whether that matches the external one that I put, you know, that I wrote it in. So, um, and, you know, and I did all my other things that I like to do with with, with a work is, um, you know, arranging the shapes on the page, um, which is both um, a, a visual aesthetic thing and also it um, influences the way it's read both out loud and in your mind when you see spaces you tend to leave those leave those spaces in your mind and i try to read them when i perform the poems um re i read it out loud to myself several times looking for awkward phrasing and you know things that could be better and also that allowed me to um to hear other connections that i may not have consciously uh, made when I was writing or, or during earlier parts of the editing process. And so I was able to tweak and manipulate things based on that. And uh, so then about a week or so ago, I read through it from start to finish, and it felt like it was ready to share with everybody. So, um, so here we are. So I zipped it up and uh, scheduled a reading. So, um, so yeah, so if anybody out there wants to publish this, Get in touch, dude, or do that. And uh, if anybody knows, uh, any can think of anybody that might want to publish it, let me know. And then uh, I will look through the comments and see if anybody has any questions. <laughs> Rob, my friend Rob says, you had me at ghoulish. <laughs> Uh, so, but it looks like there are no questions. So um, I guess uh, we will stop for today and in however long it takes me to write the next one, we will have another reading. <laughs> so thank you very much. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this. And uh, if you haven't seen uh, any of these other readings and are interested, if you go to my, uh, if, if you go to YouTube and Google Oh, well, you wouldn't Google it because it's on YouTube. But if you go to YouTube and do a search for Steve Carl poetry readings, um, that should uh, the search results should get you a link to my playlist of all of, all of these readings that I've done. Um, and so you can uh, find them there and take a look at them. So, um, but for today, we'll stop. And thank you very much. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of your day.